Hello there! So, if you've clicked on this video, you are someone who wants to progress efficiently, I hope. And uh, in this video, I will explain on which 3 star and 4 star units will be useful in the future. I will not touch upon only the dungeons that are currently available, but mostly aiming and the stuff that isn't available for you yet. So, future raids. Stuff like, like guild raids, uh, stuff like Galagos ruins, uh, various different other content. Uh, so you could prepare early. Uh, this doesn't mean that you should build these units just yet. Uh, what I want you to do with this information is to save the pieces uh, of these monsters as well as these monster families. So you could evolve them, build them up, skill them up whenever uh, the content that they're used in comes out. Uh, the reason you want to do this is because, uh, for example, especially for Nat 4s, if you skill up uh, a unit of its family, for example, let's say something random. Uh, this is not like you will not use this unit, but let's say Wind Lizardman. If you decide to build the Wind Lizardman, use a lot of uh, various element Lizardman pieces for his skill ups. If one of those Lizardmans is later used in some important content, you will simply be struggling to find uh, the Nat 5, or rather Nat 5 pieces, Nat 5, why am I saying Nat 5? Nat 4 pieces, uh, or 4 star Devil Mode to build that unit, and this way, if you know which units will be super useful in that content, you will be able to prepare them, and whenever the update drops, the same day you will be able to build those units and conquer the content efficiently. So, uh, let's get started. First of all, I'll go over the 3 star units and then I'll go over the 4 star units. Also, try to leave uh, timestamps for each unit in the description. I think if I leave those timestamps, they will also become like chapters, so you can go through one by one on all of them. And yeah, let's jump into that. Okay, so the first 3 star family that you will want to be saving up pieces for are the Frankensteins. Uh, you will need quite a few pieces because uh, of these Frankensteins, actually two of them are super useful. Uh, the fire one as well as the water one, uh, they will both prove you useful in different contents of course, but uh, you may have some not only progress but also some fun using them. So first of all, a Bulldozer, the fire Frankenstein, he is not that beneficial towards PvE progress, However, he is by far uh, the best, I would say, mm. do I want to compare him to Light Garud actually? I would say, uh, let's leave it at that, he is by far the best 3 star damage dealer in PvP. Uh, he has a third skill which actually ignores a very big portion of enemy defense, meaning that with this skill, uh, after using him, uh, for quite a bit, especially against units like Orbius, uh, he does have the potential to actually one-shot them if he has the defense buff on him. So, yes, Orbius are a bit hard to kill if they have a lot of protection, but uh, with units like that, if you are able to one-shot, they will simply not be able to even react to the damage that you're doing. They will not be able to outheal a one-shot, and he will definitely be fun to play with. He does have a decent second skill, however, he is mostly used for the third skill. Uh, this does a lot of damage, it costs very low mana to use, so I definitely think you will have some fun playing with it. And uh, jumping to the other Frankenstein, uh, this is the water one. This is probably the Frankenstein you will build first, and this unit uh, has an amazing second skill, which basically gives AoE Provoke for 11 seconds. Uh, the time doesn't really matter, uh, the only thing that matters is the rate. So you should still uh, skill up him just for that extra uh, chance to land the Provoke. And on a 2 mana cost, uh, this unit provokes all enemies around him. And the reason you use him it will be for one of the raids, uh, it will be this one. This raid has an annoying uh, minion passive, whatever you want to call it. Uh, where a lot of minions come out with huge shields, and the way to remove those shields will be by using CC effects. Uh, Tractor's Provoke is by far the most obtainable CC effect, uh, just because, first of all, it's an AoE skill with a pretty high chance to land. 
Second of all, it only costs two mana, so even if you don't land it the first time, the second time, you will just have plenty of mana to keep it at running those abilities. And you will notice uh, that a lot of beginner players, uh, especially when they were started out, and especially you, if you check one of my older videos about Boiling Waterfall, you also see that I used him as well. But yes, you will use him, you will see a lot of people using him, at least in the beginning. Although even my guildies, I think the strongest guildie so far, with like over 500,000 power, still uses him regularly for this dungeon, so yes, uh, his use will not end with just the first few runs, and you will be most likely using him into the future. He also has a little bit of niche PvP use, you can build teams around this, because uh, the mana cost is very low, but mostly you want him for that uh, boiling waterfall dungeon. Now the second family uh, you will want to be saving pieces for will be the Pixies. And yes, you may have Shannon fully built, but on top of that you will also be needing to save up additional pieces to skill up the Fire Pixie. And you may want to skill up the Light one. They sort of have similar skill sets, at least the skill 2 is the same. And while this unit has very niche PvP use, it will be still very useful towards progress. So for this unit, uh, both of her skills are important for the dungeon that they will be used in. Uh, the first skill, uh, it hits two times and it has a chance to apply level 1 burn for 20 seconds with a high, a high chance. Uh, she is mostly used for this burn, but uh, she also has a very nice third skill which sort of synergizes with her second skill. And her last skill is creates an explosion to attack en all enemies, not all enemies, the enemy within the area and explode burn. So you don't need to look at the multipliers, uh, the damage you see uh, with these percentage is important. What's important is both applying the burn on her second skill and exploding burn on her third skill. This will be useful for a dungeon called uh, Seal, so you can find it here and here. If you're watching this recently, this dungeon is most likely not out. For this dungeon, the strategy will be uh, that the boss is immune to all debuffs except damage over time, so there will be five effects that can be applied on him, and the main reason why Tattoo is useful is because, first of all, she can burn with her second skill. Second of all, uh, you will usually have a level 10 burn maxed out on the boss, and this skill basically allows you to explode that burn instantly. This means that instead of waiting for like 15 or 20 seconds for that damage to do like 0.1% max HP, uh, if you use this with a level 10 burn, Basically, she will remove that burn and do the full damage uh, that the burn would have done otherwise, meaning that if you have level 10 burn, you use the skill, the boss will instantly drop like 2 to 3 percent time, 2 to 3 percent of his max HP. And very similarly to the light one, I do not have her build, I think I didn't even get to summon her yet. Yeah, so she does very similar thing, but she is more of a safer option. Her second skill is identical, so she also burns with this skill, but for this skill, for the third one, uh, she is more of a safer option, so she revives a unit with 22% HP, and she also has a very high chance to revive a second unit, and especially in the beginner runs of that seal dungeon, you will notice that your units will die, uh, they still die even for me, because if you take a bit too long, the boss starts hitting for a lot of damage, and you will either need to swap out a divider or have a divider on the team. So she will be useful for that because uh, instead you will not need a divider that only specializes in dividing, but also have a divider that actually does some dots, allowing you for more uh, lenient team building for that dungeon. And now let's start with 4-star units. Uh, for this part, it is super important that you do save up pretty much every single piece that you can get for them. Because while 3 stars, you will get quite a few dupes eventually. Uh, for 4 stars, it will be pretty difficult to skill up, especially if you do not have a lot of 4 star devil mode. So, uh, for 4 stars, I have picked out a total of 8 uh, monster families. There will be a few more total monsters, but for families, uh, there are 8. And some of them will only have one useful unit, some of them will have like 3 or 4. So, you will need to choose for those a bit. So starting uh, with the first one, it will be Bernard, and this means that you should save all of your Griffon pieces 
for Bernard. Uh, in my opinion, Bernard is pretty much the only useful Griffon. There are people who say that Fire One is pretty decent in terms of damage, but personally, I've tested him in the beginning, I didn't really like him. For Bernard, trust me, no one will disagree that he is amazing, he will be super useful in content in terms of uh, going for those speedruns. First of all, because uh, his third skill, actually, if we go to the, where is it, the, the book? His third skill, this is pretty much the only reason you want to build a Bernard, the first skill and the second skill don't matter at all. Uh, his second, or oh, third skill, 4 mana cost and it provides level 2 attack speed up and level 2 movement speed up for 20 seconds. So where is this important? First of all, this will be, if you're into that, uh, this will be the main tool to use in speed runs. Uh, the reason for that is... He's not as much used as a attack speed unit. Well, of course, it benefits that he has that. The main reason people use him for that movement speed in speed runs, and you probably won't believe this, is to actually just walk towards the boss a bit faster. Because walking towards the boss actually takes more than half of your time in regular runs if you are not using him. So yes, uh, while the reason might be as stupid as that, uh, of course it's not the only reason people use him. Uh, if you're into speedruns, he will be super useful for that. Now overall, uh, for dungeons, uh, he will still be an amazing unit. Usually people uh, prefer to use him in speedruns, of course not just leaderboard runs, but regular speedruns. And another use for him uh, will be in one of the dungeons called the Seal as well. Uh, you you saw that uh, some 3 star units are useful there. For this dungeon, uh, he'll be super useful for the movement speed. Uh, there are only two uh, really good options for movement speed buffs. And one of them is Bernard. And the second one is this little water heart that I'm using right now. Uh, while Bernard only gives level 2 movement speed compared to the heart's level 3. Uh, Bernard does also add attack speed on the same skill and attack speed is still important especially for units that go into the seal dungeon especially because most of those units in that dungeon uh, have damage over time on their first skills meaning that if they get more attack speed they will be able to apply more damage over time effects meaning that you will kill the boss fast as you can see for example, the teams I used frequently are the two Ifrits, like the Wind and the Fire one. Uh, if you check their first skill, uh, their first skill has a 6% sharp line burn. The Wind one has an effect of increasing damage over time by 2 seconds. And both of these units greatly benefit not only from the movement speed, but also from the attack speed from the skill. So, for Bernard, definitely build him and he will put you to a lot of use. The second unit, and probably not a mystery already because a lot of guys do suggest building her, will be Naomi. She will pretty much be the only useful martial cat from her family, so I won't go in too much into detail. Uh, you probably already know why Naomi is amazing. She, first of all, has a very high multiplier skill as well as useful effects on a low cost, so for dungeons you do want to be spamming this skill. Her passive also allows her to increase the crit rate and crit damage of her attacks by a lot because raids usually have a bunch of debuffs. So uh, I won't go too much into detail as I said. Naomi, amazing damage dealer. A little bit worse if you have units like Argen, but uh, for those that do not, build her and you'll definitely have some fun using it. As you can see, mine is fully awakened, fully evolved and she's been pretty much main damage dealer in raids. Okay, and the next unit, uh, now we're gonna be jumping into families that have two or more usable units because, yeah, the ones that only had one, I picked them out, I've looked over the rest of the 4 star book, but I really didn't see that many important options, so we'll be jumping towards the units that have two or more uh, multiple units in the same family. The first one will be the house, so... Both the Water Howl and the El Hide Lao are amazing units for healing. Uh, they're mostly used in dungeons, especially the later ones, uh, so like the Boiling Waterfall and the Twisted Marsh. Uh, the Water one will be a little bit more useful in the Boiling Waterfall, uh, because that raid also applies a heal block, which the Water Howl is able to cleanse. Uh, while the Light one will be a little bit more useful in the Twisted Marsh, uh, because 
In this dungeon, uh, the boss actually likes to transfer debuffs and while well, she may transfer like 8 debuffs, probably like 5 or 6 of them will be damage over time effects. And the Light Howl is extremely efficient and cleansing those. As you can see her third skill, she removes all damage over time, uh, she gives healing, she gives additional healing, she gives immunity, so she's just like a perfect healer for that dungeon. These house are also an amazing replacement for healing purposes if uh, you, are, you do not want to summon the Anvil from her banner. So yes, uh, do save the water pieces, do save all of the hull pieces for skill ups. The light hull is an at 4, meaning that he is hard to obtain, but uh, I'm still unsure whether you will get the same secret dungeons, but once the secret dungeons come out, uh, the light hull will actually be pretty easily obtainable from it, so do not be worried, as long as the dungeons will be the same, you will have a pretty easy time obtaining these within a few weeks. Alright, the next family also has two useful units in it and uh, it is the Lich family. I'm not even sure if Liches are out on global yet uh, because for us they came a bit later. I, I hope uh, they are because uh, one of these is an amazing unit for PvE. The second one is a bit more niche but he is still useful in some PvE and PvP scenarios. So let's start with the water one, by far the better one. This unit is first of all he's super special because he works without any skill ups probably the only unit in the whole game that actually works without any skill ups as long as he's awakened and awakened to level 5 i mean uh, he gets this passive which basically allows this passive to be cycled i'm not gonna go too much into their skills uh, you can read them by yourself in the book uh, but basically this unit is literally just made for one specific dungeon but uh, the dungeon that he was made for he performs extremely well i actually made a video just on him and trust me this unit is insanely op if you are able to only farm like let's say level 10 of any dungeon and you have the water lich with the water lich you would probably be able to farm like level 13 and level 14 of this dungeon uh, that unit is made I would say quite specifically for this dungeon and nothing else. So you can read on the boss's skills on what he does. Then you can read on how the Water Lich works and you will definitely be able to connect two and two together to understand why this one is amazing. Of course, uh, if you do not feel like reading, I will leave a video in the description that I've done a few months ago that still stands. Uh, you will understand why the Water Lich is so amazing for this dungeon and if you do have him, if he's released especially, uh, trust me, I do recommend building him pretty early because he will be able to boost your progress by a bunch. And the second unit from the Lich family is actually the Dark Lich. Uh, this one I do not have myself, however, I've seen him used a lot and the main use for him is the third skill. Uh, so as you can see, uh, this skill basically it hits 5 times and it has a 47% chance to apply poison for 25 seconds. This unit once again is an amazing unit for the sealed dungeon because uh, first of all only dots work in here, second of all poison is one of the rarer uh, damage over time effects and usually maxing out poison is very difficult so if you have a unit or two like the Dark Lich, uh, you are gaining a lot of additional advantage and especially advantage towards the leaderboard because while most people will not have the poison effect, you might be the only person who has the poison effect, you'll be doing a lot more damage in the leaderboards because you are the only person that's actually damaging the boss with the poison effect. Okay, the fifth Nat 4 family that will be important are the Inogamis. These are of course exclusively only for light and dark units, so I won't go into detail much because uh, they're not farmable, you do need to pull a light and dark net 4 from a scroll, which will be quite difficult. But the light one, uh, I noticed that people underrate him a lot, and while yes, he's not as good as in the Summoner's War Sky Arena game, he is still pretty useful here, as he's sort of a generalist unit that has several different purposes packed into one unit so first of all he can remove all beneficial effects on a unit so if you need that strip for the boss his third skill or i mean his second skill does provide it his third skill is also a decent heal as well as boosts attack speed up on all of your team so 
In some very rare scenarios, he is pretty decent. I personally very recommend him for doing the guild raids. Uh, for this, especially if you are someone who is a tower taker. I mean, you will find out more on what a tower taker is. I will definitely make a video on the guild raids when they are released for you. But uh, he might find some use for that. I also used him in scenario farming because he boosts my attack speed and uh, some additional healing. But of course, don't build a unit just because you use him in scenario. Uh, just keep in mind that he still does have some use in this game. But of course, the Dark Inogami is miles, miles, and I mean miles better than the Light One. He's pretty much the top damage dealer slash debuffer in terms of raids, in terms of PvE content, that's the Dark Inogami Crow. So he has several useful skills. First of all, his first ability is amazing. It's useful in raids for the defense break. It's useful in seal for the poison. Uh, his second skill also provides damage taken up, which is a pretty rare effect and an effect that is really needed for most raids. His third skill also has an insane damage multiplier, 1000% plus 155 per harmful effect, and that's on 3 mana cost. He also applies attack speed up, so he can attack with the basic attack even more. So yeah, uh, I will show you the rating, and I don't think I will need any more explanation to do. And trust me, if you're someone who has this unit in a raid, people will love your company. And now, probably the third from the last unit, and... Again, this unit has two useful units in their family. However, some families do have some issues as well. So first of all, are the cowgirls. The dark one will be sort of a... Uh, people like to call her a Karambit replacement. I personally tested her damage. She does a little bit less damage. But if you do not feel like uh, building a unit that pretty much does the same as a Nat 4 variant, uh, she's an amazing option for you. For her skills, uh, pretty much all three of her skills ignore all damage mitigation effects, meaning that shields, uh, defense buffs, invincibilities uh, really don't matter for her when she's attacking because she will still do damage through all those buffs, and that applies on all three of her skills. She also has a passive where she increases the crit damage by a bit, so uh, pretty much uh, there really isn't too much to talk about her other than she is sort of a slightly slightly weaker version of uh, a nat 5 called karambit and the second super useful unit from this family is lauren and she is sort of a complete different unit from cassie because she is mostly used for pvp purposes she has a kit where she is able to do a lot of debuffs she is able to strip beneficial effects with her third skill She's able to put attack speed down on the enemy and she also has an amazing passive which basically increases cooldown effects, uh, in decreases defense on the enemy and since that is a passive it's pretty much with both of her skills as well as with basic abilities. Uh, she can sort of just keep shooting, keep debuffing the enemy and yeah, amazing unit. And a honorable mention, I will not include her as a must build, but Water uh, Cowgirl is also a decent unit for uh, the Seal Dungeon. She has Frostbite on her second skill, and uh, she has a Frostbite Increase skill on her third skill. In my opinion, not worth a shout out compared to the other two, but keep in mind that the Water one is sometimes still used in the uh, Seal Dungeon. And now, for the last two families, we're gonna be upping the echelon even more. And for the Epicurean Priest family, she actually has three useful uh, colors, elements, whatever you wanna call them. The first one, Chloe, will not go into too much detail about it because uh, Chloe is something that is recommended by a lot of players. You're probably already familiar with what her skills do. So yes, she's an amazing unit. Uh, she does help a lot in PvE, she will help a lot in PvP, both for her second and her third skill, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, then the second useful Epicurean Priest will be the Water one. She will be a little bit worse, I would say, for uh, PvP, but she will be a tiny bit better for PvE, in my opinion. Uh, especially the dungeon that I will mention in a second, and at least that's the dungeon I use her for. You may find some more use for that. 
So her heal is very similar and uh, it sort of scales well with her third skill if you are able to combo those. But for now I'll just look at it like this. Uh, she basically heals for her max HP and if a ally has a shield she also applies defense buff. Her third skill is the skill that applies the shield and it also cleanses one uh, harmful effect. So she can combo third skill into second skill pretty easily. She also has a passive which in my opinion isn't too great. Uh, it only affects herself and when attacked with a critical hit she basically gets a shield. It does have a very long passive so it will not matter in where she is used that much. But personally I use her in the Galagos Ruins. She's an awesome healer for those higher level stages and definitely helped me out a lot. Apart from that, you may need to find some niche use for it, but I did want to give a shout out to her because her heals are very similar and you can make some interesting combos, especially with a shield and you get a Bastetti when who can apply shields. You may connect the dots, what I'm trying to say. But yeah, uh, awesome unit. And the third unit from the family is something I also unfortunately don't have yet, but it is the Light Epic Embraced. And Mostly she was used for reviving, her revive got nerfed a bit, but her revive is still a very useful skill. But if you look at this heal, and look at the mana cost of this heal, first of all the heal is by far the strongest of all three Epicurean Priests. Second of all, this skill will be a little bit more useful than the fire one in my opinion. Uh, continuous recovery I would say is a little bit more of a useful buff then invincibility in a lot of scenarios, however invincibility is still an amazing buff, definitely don't underrate that. But yes, if you look at the mana cost, uh, this mana cost is on a way lower both cooldown as well as the cost to use the skill. So for light one it's 3 mana, for the water and the fire ones it's 4 mana and the cooldown is significantly higher. The heal is way lower than the light one, so she's pretty much a top tier healer as far as 4 star goes, however without the moving harmful effects, that's why units like Lulu and Shushu are still are used a lot. And now for the biggest family, the grand finale, the Hug family, it actually has four super useful units. Some are a little bit more niche, some of them are amazing, so let's go through all of them. First of all is the Water Hug. He is sort of a Bernard clone, he is mostly used for his third skill and he is mostly used in the sealed dungeon as well. He provides level 3 movement speed, level 3 crit resistance up and level 3 crit damage taken down, so this allows you to reduce the damage you take from bosses attacks greatly and also allows you to zoom through the map by dodging those attacks way more easier. I also really like him for AFK farming, especially if you're someone who does AFK farming overnight. He's a good unit uh, for that, because first of all, he sort of just keeps buffing that movement speed to level 3, to level 6, depending on how much mana you have, allowing you to run to the next enemies way faster, as you can see with the level 6 movement speed, I'm probably moving like 60% faster or something like that. So yeah, amazing unit for that. The second unit from his family, who sees some really nice use, is the fire one, the Rakuni. He is mostly used for his first skill actually, and on a very specific build, like a, I believe it's attack speed, HP, HP is something that I recommend. Uh, every time he basic attacks, he recovers 6.1% of the lowest uh, HP unit on your team. Meaning that if you build him on a lot of attack speed, uh, he will keep just popping, popping, popping those small heals. And in a lot of cases, those small heals are even better than a huge massive heal from a charge skill. He also has two useful charge skills. so. First of all, this skill decreases summoner skill cooldown by 40% and skill acceleration, which decreases cooldowns even further. And uh, this is sort of an emergency heal, it removes damage over time and heals for a 55% HP. Of course, it only heals for one unit, not everyone on your team. And for this unit, I personally use him in Galagos, but for this content, he is probably my one of the most favorite healers for that. And the last two ones, are actually light and dark, so we'll review them. So, the Dark Hug Kova, he is pretty much known as the best, the best raid support unit out there, and I'm so happy to actually have him. I got him so early into the game, and he helped me to boost across all of the new raids 
super fast. So he's useful for two of his skills, uh, not the basic attack, but both of the charge skills. First of all, uh, this skill, you can ignore the root, but it applies the damage, crit damage taken up effect on the boss, and this effect is pretty hard to get, uh, especially if you're not using Naomi. She does have the same effect here, but for people who are not using Naomi, that effect is very rare, and this is like one of the best options to get effect on that boss. And the main skill is of course the third skill, as you can see this is an AoE buff which gives attack speed up, precision up and crit rate up and uh, while well, precision up is whatever, uh, the other two are amazing buffs so at level 2 it buffs for 30% extra attack speed and 40% crit rate. Uh, for any damage dealer you can imagine how much that crit damage boost is important, so if I use a set that has very low crit rate but pretty high on crit damage, with Krova's boost he would be having 96%, with Naomi's passive you can lower it even further, for example since she gets 15% crit rate per debuff, I would only need like what, 45% crit rate to just have 100 when hitting the boss, so yeah. This unit, it also synergizes very well with attack speed based damage dealers, so stuff like Cassie, stuff like Karambit, uh, what, uh, what else is there, what else is there? The Wind Magic Knight Lupinus, the Fire Magic Knight uh, I believe also is pretty decent, and a bunch more of these similar attack speed units. And the last unit in the game, in this list that I will be mentioning is the Light Hug. Unfortunately, I personally do not have him, but he is an amazing support unit uh, as well. So first of all, his base attack is very similar to the Fire Hug and it also recovers HP for every attack that he does. His second skill is also very similar. He gets skill acceleration and uh, deduces skill, uh, skill cooldowns of the summoner. And his third skill is an amazing passive as well. So applies attack up to the alley with the highest attack and additionally applies continuous recovery and endure if the target's HP is below a certain ratio. So sort of an all-around summoner as well as monster support unit. Very good, in my opinion, Dark One is the better one compared to the Light One, but nonetheless uh, worth a mention. And yeah, uh, that's about it for the list of the 3-star and 4-star units that you should save, at least the families that you should save. If you do have any questions, or any suggestions for future videos, do make them, drop them in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!